Hey fellas, it's uh, Zam again, and I'm bringing you the review and some gameplay of the Tier 6 German Premium Spitfire. Um, this thing, uh, apparently it's affectionately known, or an actual nickname for it, is the Messerschmitt. Um, uh, what it is, uh, you know, this has been look like a... <laughs> somewhat of a Frankenstein. Um, uh, 1942, uh, the Germans got hold of a downed um, Spitfire Mark V. And that was end of, it was actually I think the beginning, the November of 1942, they captured this almost complete um, Spitfire Mark V. Um, they were at that time, we're, we're kind of curious. Uh, I mean, you know, this is the legendary Spitfire. It has the uh, very good Merlin engine in it, which in, the, in this model, the 5 would have had the Merlin 45 series engine. And they, uh, after they captured uh, this model and with that engine in it, uh, they were curious just to see how uh, their new uh, engine stacked up with against it, um, and specifically also see how the airframe performed with uh, their new engine. Uh, the problem is with the early marks of this uh, of the Spitfire, they could not put their DB600 series engine in it, or 601 engine, I should say, from the Messerschmitt BF109 into it. It would not fit. Um, this newer version of the Spitfire. I'm assuming they're probably speaking more of the Spitfire 1. Um, uh, the DB-601 could not fit into this uh, this frame of this aircraft. With the Mark V Spitfire, uh, it actually had a little bit more room, and uh, they were able to, with a redesign of the engine, the 601, uh, the new version was called the 605, the DB-605. Uh, that was to be the new version to use in the... Uh, uh, the BF 109s, the Messerschmitt uh, 109 uh, aircraft. So they got this back to Germany, and in a process, they shoehorned the uh, DB 605 engine, hence the name Spitfire, Spitfire Mark V DB 605. Uh, they shoehorned that engine into this airframe. Uh, with some other minor, <laughs> obviously some other modifications, uh, I believe the cowlings uh, and definitely the um, propellers, nose cone, uh, essentially everything from the windscreen uh, almost to the front of the aircraft was uh, changed. Uh, you know, obviously this looks more like a, a Spitfire's uh, front end, or not a Spitfire's, a 109's front end. So uh, the Germans. Uh, modified the Spitfire Mark V that they had captured, and uh, you know once they got the engine put in, uh, they just they decided to do some test runs on it, of course, whatnot. Um, uh, curiously enough, with the same engine, BF or ME ME109, uh, this aircraft actually performed not quite as well as it uh, the 109 at altitudes less than 11,000 feet. Over 11,000 feet, um, uh, this engine made a huge difference in the Spitfire. Uh, in fact, so much so that it was actually better than the Merlin uh, production, the, the, the 45, the Merlin 45 series engine. Uh, this outperformed it um, quite a bit drastically, almost a 5,000 foot difference in uh, altitude. Uh, and almost, I think, well, up to 41,000, where the Merlin could get to about 36. Uh, so it was a definite increase in performance for the Spitfire <laughs> using the German engine. Um, of course, this was 1944 by the time they got done with all this stuff, and at that time the Spitfire, uh, you know, obviously was uh, constantly changing. Uh, with and it eventually came out with the uh, Spitfire 9, and this version of the Merlin uh, allowed this aircraft to have similar performance as the. Um, the 605 engined uh, Spitfire that the Germans had. 
Okay, history done. Uh, this was just a one-off. Um, of course, this aircraft was actually uh, eventually destroyed in a bombing run, uh, I believe, in 1945. Uh, so, you know, we just have some pictures of what this aircraft looked like. Uh, still flies like a Spitfire. I know it still has an effective uh, high-altitude combat. Still has really good... Uh, has the ability to turn. Has good boost. Uh, if you've played any of the Spitfires, you know this, that... You know, it, the, uh, the Spitfire in general is not uh, the best at just about anything, but it's really, really good at just about everything. So you want to turn, turn, altitude, uh, high altitude performance, excellent, uh, turns really well, and it has, you know, uh, once again, not the best uh, for weapons, but they're still pretty damn good. Similar to the... Similar to the uh, to the Mark V uh, with the 220 millimeters and 7.69s, uh, you know it, it's it's very comparable to the uh, to the uh, the actual British uh, Spitfire V, uh, at least when it comes to weapons. So in that in that vein, uh, if you're comfortable with the Spitfires in the in the British line, uh, you're not going to have a problem with this thing. This is this is excellent in in, in that sense. Uh, this is actually my favorite tier six premium. Uh, I know crazy, right? I have to go to the German line to fly to fly a uh, Spitfire, but no, yeah. You, if you enjoyed the Spitfires and you're looking for a plane for to train crew uh, or even you know make money. Uh, this is this is a very good airplane uh, at tier six, and uh, a very enjoyable. Uh, you know, it's entirely kind of, it's a different play style than say the with the uh, BF 109F. Uh, this is you know has a, a much better uh, the, uh, horizontal maneuvering than the 109 does. But you can still get to altitude. You can still play the energy game. Uh, there's really not anything this doesn't do well. Um, like I said. Uh, above adequate uh, firepower, uh, maneuverability is excellent, uh, so is altitude performance, excellent. So yeah, there's not a whole lot this thing can't do. So if you enjoy the Spitfire, uh, pick this one up. If you're looking for a trainer for your uh, German line, uh, you're definitely not going to be disappointed. So I do have one game for you guys. Uh, like I said, I'll run through a little bit of everything uh, while we... Uh, playing the game, so uh, I'll catch you uh, right about now. Hey fellas, alright, back with the uh, replay, and uh, we have a fair amount of uh, a nice matchup here with uh, with some of the, there's humans and bots and blah blah blah. So, we're on over the water, uh, the Golden Gate Bridge. Uh, yeah, the, I, I didn't even look at the name of the map, but whatever. So, we're back uh, with the Spitfire, uh, the DB-605. Um, uh, of course, in just about every map you play, or game you play, you're immediately uh, going to start boosting for altitude. Uh, it has a good boost. Um, you know, you can get uh, altitude fairly quickly with it. Um, but you know that that that's that's the great thing about this plane. You know, it, it has the ability to uh, get altitude uh, really quickly. Uh, it performs well at altitude, and uh, if you do get into one of those where you do drop altitude, and you're you know, and of course getting into more of a uh, horizontal fight, uh, you're <laughs> you're not out anything. You know that that's the great thing about the Spitfires. You know, they're not uh, they're not really uh, pigeonholed into one or the other uh, play style. So, but like I said, it's they're not the best at this or best at that, but they're just really good at either and or. You know. So, I'll pick my first target. Um, still gaining altitude. Uh, I'm gonna wait till he dives uh, so I can get the drop on him. They've actually knocked out two of us uh, almost uh, immediately. Uh, 
drop in on the uh, F4U1. Um, pull around on him. Keep on him. I'm actually trying to dodge as much as I can because I do have a bot chasing me a good chunk of this game. Um, they, for some reason, have a uh, serious heart on for me. Uh, of course, you know, they probably did, I probably did get sick. Stay on the F4. Um, you know, you do have the speed uh, as well as the maneuverability to stay on these kind of planes. Um, he can't run away from me. And uh, you typically can't out climb me as well. Pull over. Keep in XP44. Uh, you know, obviously he's a, uh, a human player. Um, he uh, actually went into a an attempt to dogfight with me, uh, which is uh, which is strange. He didn't actually turn and burn on that deal. Uh, nail him, pull in on the MiG-3, and there really isn't any a aircraft here except for maybe the Yak-1 uh, that I have to worry about. Uh, in a horizontal flight, you know, this, this Spitfire will th I'll turn just about every aircraft here. So, you know, when I was talking about earlier about being uh, kind of a jack of all trades, uh, you know, that's what you get. And you're getting it in the German, uh, in this German aircraft. So, get down on the MiG 3, chase him down. Uh, you know, they don't have the speed advantage uh, over me. So it leaves me against the Yak one. Now this is my only real challenge in a horizontal flight. Um, so pull around, uh, let him get above me, come up, and of course I'm also at this time uh, getting jumped by the A5. So I leave the bot, turn on the, to the human pilot. Uh, once again, he's in an A5. Uh, it's not really going to be a fight. Uh, he doesn't have the uh, horizontal maneuverability that this aircraft does. And I'm not even sure uh, at this altitude that he would have a chance to even get away. So, pulling on on him. Let's see if I can try to get him knocked out here before. I can see the MiG-3 circling me, so I'm hoping uh, that eventually I get him knocked out here before I get screwed by the uh, MiG-3. Or the Yak-1. Yak-1's in on me. Pull up. I do see the heavy fighter coming in on my, uh, on my 6. So I'm going to try to get in as much damage as I can before the, uh, yeah. So, hey, uh, 07 to Falco for the assist. Um, he dives back, he uh, shoots for altitude. And now it's just the last two remaining. So a little bit of cleanup process here. Uh, as you can, as you see in the, you know, in the video, this thing does just a little bit of everything, you know. I mean, it, it does well at, it does well at uh, altitude. It does well on the deck, um, horizontal, vertical, you name it, it can do it. Uh, has good boost, good firepower, you know, if, if, if you stay off the trigger, uh, <laughs> unlike me, uh, you know, you keep the 20s uh, nice and cool, uh, you can do a fair amount of damage in a burst. So, I uh, got the IL-2, uh, the 129B, you know, I'm sitting at 4, and uh, he's sitting at 3. Um, I could have very well have... Uh, you know, just finish this uh, IL-2 off. But you know what? I thought, you know what? He's, he's already got this much time into it. Let's, uh, yeah, I'm, I'll, I'll let him have it. So I turn in on the, uh, the 129. Get a nice couple bursts into him. Spin up. Uh, Guardson from Falco gets his fourth kill on the other uh, uh, IL-2. Uh, leaving me here with the HS-129B. And hopefully pick up my um, ace for uh, the win. So, guys, hope you enjoyed the, the video. Uh, like I said, I really enjoy this aircraft. Uh, if you're looking for a premium aircraft for the for the Jap or for the German line, uh, definitely pick it up because it is uh, well worth its money. So, you guys have a good night. Thanks for watching.